Welcome to the Rundown on I-24 News. I'm Caleb and David. We start the broadcast with breaking news out of Lebanon. Reports of a major explosion in a suburb of Beirut, possibly an Israeli airstrike. Of course, the backdrop to it. There you see pictures coming out of Beirut. Part the backdrop, of course, uh, Saturday's uh, rocket attack uh, on Majd al Shams in the Golan Heights, Israel's Golan Heights, in which 12 children were killed. And a, a rocket attack by Hezbollah today that killed an Israeli civilian. A, a hard response to these attacks was promised by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, this could be it. Uh, with me in studio, we have our Middle East correspondent, uh, Ariel Osaran, and retired IDF Colonel Dr. Jacques Neria, the former deputy head of assessment of Israeli <coughs> military intelligence. Are you, what, what, what are we getting out of uh, uh, Lebanon about what this could be? So I'll tell you what we know. Well, we know a huge explosion rocked the southern Dahia suburb of Beirut, the capital in Lebanon, and there's images coming out of significant damage there. Now, the Dahia uh, suburb, that's the basically the headquarters, the stronghold of Hezbollah in Beirut. What we're hearing from reports in Arab media as well as in Reuters is that the target was a session of Hezbollah's top shore council. That's the deciding body of the terror organization. And the target was a senior commander in that, uh, in, in, in that council. His fate is unknown, but images coming out of uh, downtown Beirut show quite a bit of devastation going on there. Um, also, ad additional reports uh, citing Western diplomats saying that this is an Israeli strike with all Arab media already attributing the strike to Israel. No official word yet from Israel. Also no uh, announcement yet from Hezbollah regarding this uh, strike. Uh, Jacques, maybe a better explanation. If this Shura Council was the target of the strike, what are we talking about? We are talking here? about the top of the pyramid. The top of the pyramid of the, this is in sort of a, the council, the council of Hezbollah, the, the place where discussions and uh, are taking place, where decisions are made concerning the policy of Hezbollah internally, externally. This is the place where the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the main responsible people there are very close to, uh, to uh, Hassan Nasrallah. But would Nasrallah himself be there or is that too it open could be, a space? It, it could be, it could, it could be, but I mean, the, certainly the, uh, a, a, a cleric like Hashem Safuddin, uh, who is uh, a, a close uh, relative of, uh, of Nasrallah, might be there definitely. So the, we are talking about the top brass of, uh, of Hezbollah being targeted. And uh, now, uh, a, a, small, a small detail. The attack was in an area in a quarter called Hart Hrek. This is not exactly the Dahia. Now, if we have to, uh, uh, to discuss the, the, the place where the Dahia is concerning Hart Hrek, Hart Hrek is much on the east, and whereas the Dahia is south of the, uh, of the Khalde Airport, International Airport. So these are the, uh, two different uh, places. Hart Hrek is also the alma mater of uh, Nabi Hiberi, so the, 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 the chief of uh, the, of the Amal militia. So this is definitely a place that, uh, that has a high, uh, a high uh, in, intensive, uh, let's say, uh, impact on, on Hezbollah, and it's uh, more hitting the sovereignty of Hezbollah rather than its military uh, power. In uh, South Lebanon, where is, and we are seeing those pictures. Uh, you see uh, uh, some major damage there. Uh, we saw that long shot there, but in the close-ups, you could see, obviously, uh, major damage there in the streets uh, of Beirut. Uh, and clearly this was a very serious airstrike. And Jacques, what does it mean for Israel? Of course, we have to know Western powers, the U.S., uh, European powers uh, urging Israel to show restraint. Uh, is this a restrained response? Well, or is this know, one that could ignite a, and escalate this conflict? Certainly, striking Beirut is well outside of the parameters that Israel has set itself uh, since the beginning of the war, which is mainly striking South Lebanon. No, no if we... Uh, uh, if we continue the, the logic uh, and we assess the logic of Hezbollah, any strike deep inside Lebanon will be responded by a deep strike inside Israel. So we have to be prepared. Now, if, uh, and uh, Hassan Nasrallah said it very plainly and very simply, an airport uh, with an airport, uh, the, it's a tick for tack, I mean, the, the policy. You hit me here, I will hit you there. You, uh, you, uh, and and I, I believe that hitting Beirut as a, 
uh, as the capital of Lebanon, we might see uh, a similar attack on the area of Tel Aviv. Certainly Haifa, I mean, we, we have to look beyond Haifa into an area that uh, Hezbollah, it might, as you say, ignite the, uh, the, the uh, uh, novel conflict between us and, uh, and Hezbollah. This is definitely a, a turning point in the conflict uh, uh, and in the war with Hamas. Uh, and, uh, Ariel, I believe right before this, there was uh, uh, home front command warnings for whatever residents of Kirat Shmona would sit right on the border for them to remain at home. But as Jacques is saying, uh, the anticipation here uh, could be uh, a much deeper strike in Israel. Uh, so far, though, uh, no word out of Israel, correct, or, or any, any change in, uh, for example, home front command instructions. Well, my understanding is that those instructions for the local communities in the north to stay in their um, shelters, that didn't come from the, uh, from the military, from the Home Front Command, but rather from the municipalities themselves um, instructing the residents to stay uh, in the quarters. Now, that would uh, be an indication that perhaps they got uh, word of this in, uh, intended strike because it coincided more or less the announcement to stay in shelter and the beginning of uh, reports coming out from Beirut. But really, we're seeing... Oh, wait, there is now... Uh, Dover Sahal uh, has just put out a... Uh uh, a statement here uh, saying that uh, uh, the IDF uh, did make a, a targeted strike in Beirut, as you said, uh, and it was on the commander responsible for the murder of children in Majd el Shams uh, and civilians, of course, over the uh, of the uh, many Israeli civilians. It says uh, at this stage there's no change in the orders for Home Front Command, and the army will update uh, if there is. So there you go. Uh, and this commander, my understanding, uh, we still don't know yeah. his fate, but this targeted commander uh, would be Fuad Shukar, also known as Khaj Muhsen, considered one of the top, top, top advisors to, Hezbollah, uh, to, to Nasrallah, Hezbollah leader, and also one of the main um, elements to execute the different plans and manage the war machine for Hezbollah, whether it's acquiring right. um, which new means in, weapons. In, 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 which means, in other words, that Hezbollah cannot, uh, cannot uh, ignore that. Uh, uh, it's, it's a real uh, challenge to Hezbollah, and Hezbollah will respond. All right, let's go to our correspondent on uh, Zach Anders in northern Israel. I think we have him on the phone at this stage. Uh, Zach, are you with us? Yes. All right, so we do now have official confirmation from the IDF. This was a basically a targeted a, a killing, of, but using uh, clearly an airstrike of significant uh, uh, magnitude in Beirut. And, of course, it comes on the heels of a, civil, a, a civilian death, another civilian death up there in northern Israel today. Yeah, and I would stress that the comments and the rhetoric that Hezbollah has been using today uh, is important to note at this point because they, through their proxies, telling Al Jazeera that they are prepared to retaliate and that they will retaliate against any Israeli aggression that took place today with this strike in Beirut. We're going to pay very close attention to an already hot border. There's been six attacks today. Hezbollah has claimed responsibility for the one you mentioned that killed that 30 year old civilian, the man in Hashkarim. Uh, that's started fires that are still burning, Kalev, and we were in position covering those. And the reason why we're joining you on the phone is because there was a spat of uh, incoming rockets. They said 10 incoming rockets right about at the same time that this Beirut attack took place, or purported attack, I should say. Right about at that same time, uh, there was another Hezbollah launch. They all appeared to be intercepted, but at that point, uh, some IDF soldiers who were with us uh, that had communicated with the media unit had asked us that we need to move and move quick. So they pushed us out rather fast at that exact same time, and we started driving south, and we're still nearby close enough to be able to see and hear interceptions. But... Uh, Kiryat Shmona, when we were leaving an absolute ghost town, uh, and you could hear the interceptions and the outgoing artillery a lot louder today than I've experienced in uh, many of my days up here. 
All right. Now, there was uh, apparently there were orders, uh, stay at home uh, orders given to whoever's left in Kirch Mona, as you say, it's mainly a ghost town. Uh, but concern uh, about that. Clearly, the North uh, especially has to be bracing for a response now. As I said earlier, Home Front Command has not issued any specific orders other than, as, as far as we know, uh, other than that warning to Kirch Mona. But clearly, as you said now, anyone up there in the North, and I'm including you, Zach, has to be at least certainly near shelter at this stage and i think uh, what we should watch out for uh, you know hezbollah has been I, I i struggle with the words patient isn't the right word but uh, directly after they've absorbed major hits or uh, you know rod one force commander's been killed it's not like we see them respond immediately there's been a delay or some hesitation on their part and it, it, that's been kind of why this conflict has been called in the past calculated. Now, the question going forward, especially for tonight, if this is a gloves-off moment, do they hit back hard? Do they hit back fast? Well, they certainly said that they would today. Uh, but if I, I and uh, I think the Home Front Command rules that are being communicated for those communities in the evacuation zone, I think everybody in northern Israel should take that, whether or not they are listed in those zones, take those uh, very seriously tonight and be near shelter, be prepared for any eventuality. We don't know uh, when we're dealing with a terror group like Hezbollah what their mindset is and where they actually decide tonight to hit. They've felt like they're adhering to some rules of engagement and firing on northern border community towns, but we don't know how hard this hit them or right. uh, how they're feeling tonight. And I think anybody, really anybody in Israel should be uh, paying very close attention to this near shelter. All right. Uh, Zach Anders, uh, we'll check in with you when we can. Of course, Ariel, we're getting some reports out of uh, Arabic media concerning some of the uh, details we've been discussing of this airstrike in Beirut. Yeah, the airstrike in Beirut on the Shore Council meeting of Hezbollah. This is the top decision-making body of the Iranian-backed proxy in Lebanon. And more and more Reports are confirming what we had initially uh, reported with caution that, indeed, the target of the strike was uh, Fuad Shuker, uh, also known as Khaj Muhsan, because they all have their civilian name and their Hezbollah name, their Hezbollah name meaning their fighter name. If they were just a political organization, no, no they wouldn't have. No, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. So um, the understanding is that Shuker was uh, the target. Uh, not clear what his uh, fate is, but... Uh, more and more indications are that this was a, a successful strike. And uh, indeed, I mean, Fouad Shouker, he's also wanted uh, by the FBI. Uh, there's a, 15, a $5 million reward for anyone who brings information uh, as to his whereabouts. And so this uh, illustrates the magnitude of, uh, of a man like Shouker, who uh, in Lebanon, they're already saying that he was one of the closest things to the level of Imad Mouniya, who was the military commander of Hezbollah. I think that's giving Shuker uh, a, a little more credit than what he deserves, but indeed one of the closest military advisors to Nasrallah and really one of the key elements in uh, Hezbollah's war machine, again, whether it's acquiring weapons, contact with IRGC, the Islamic Revolutionary Guards of Iran, and really a, a, a key figure in everything that has to do right. with uh, Hezbollah's military wing and their nefarious activities in the region, mainly against Israel. Well, General, let's go back to northern Israel and speak with the reserves IDF Major Elliot Chodov. He, Chodov, he uh, himself served in northern command there uh, and now a yes. political military analyst. And Elliot, thanks for joining us. First of all, your reaction to this uh, strike, was this the strike that should have been taken by Israel in response to Majd al-Shams? Uh, Israel saying it was, and we've been discussing it, uh, the Hezbollah commander who was even directly responsible right. for that strike there. If this is all that Israel does, then I think it's inadequate. Um, if it's the opening of a more extensive response, then I think it's an excellent way to start. Right. Now, uh, let me ask you, the, uh, how do you assess, though, even that, even uh, even though you're saying it's a good start, uh, how do you assess how Hezbollah is going to respond just to this particular strike, uh, even sometime, for example, this evening, if not, uh, if not later than that? I, I think that we're going to see a significant Hezbollah response. That this, this was not an, an appetizer, if you will, as a strike. This was starting with the main course and then moving up from there. So... Uh, 
you know, the United States pressured Israel not to strike Beirut, not to strike the Dachia. I think in in terms of the call it the, the maneuvering, the, the the dancing between the raindrops, it was an excellent opening move. First of all, it, it let the West and, and, and America know uh, Beirut is not off off limits. The Dachia is not off limits. And at the same time, as uh, as was mentioned earlier, went after somebody who was on the American list as well. It's going to be very difficult for America to condemn this as uh, somehow as a rogue strike. But uh, it's something that I think that Hezbollah will feel uh, obligated to respond to. Now the big question is, how do they do it? In other words, will they... Uh, Go stay in some sort of a frame that they've been, which is already too far. In other words, already striking a target where there's a, a civilian population, or are they going to expand it? And I think we're now at the stage where, as I said earlier, if if it's all that Israel does, then then we're waiting for a Hezbollah response and see if it spirals. If this is the opening move of an, of a night long uh, series of operations, then uh, as I, I've repeated many times, that there's an old saying. No plan survives the first contact with the enemy. I'm going to say no analysis does either. Right. Uh, obviously, we'll have to readjust our analysis as these events uh, go. But let me just ask you, since we are discussing the possibility of Hezbollah expanding its range of attacks, maybe now striking urban centers uh, in Israel, south of uh, northern Israel, places like Haifa, even here in Tel Aviv, a home from command so far says no change. And we know they issued stay-at-home orders at Kirat Shmona, whoever's left there just in the minutes before right. the attack. But should Home Front Command, especially there in the north, be uh, telling uh, the residents to all the residents in the north to perhaps stay at home, stay near a shelter at this stage? Uh, look, Home Front Command operates according to military intelligence. I, uh, I presume that if there's any indicator of some sort of massive response, and, and typically you have some of that, um, then Home Front Command will change it. What's interesting is that a lot of the local municipalities, Tzfat, for example, some of the local regional councils, have emphasized that Home Front Command has not changed its instructions. However, and in uh, Miron Galil, Galil, for example, uh, the the regional council has said to the people who are still in the evacuated uh, towns and, and kibbutzim, and there are people there, that they should go into safe rooms and stay there, and in the other towns to to stay nearby, uh, not to gather, not to wander, and, and so on and so forth. So there is a sort of undercurrent of that. I can't say whether that's a, a behind-the-scenes hint from Home Front Command or not, but obviously a lot of people are coming to the same conclusion that you are, and, I, and I've come to it as well. This is not a good night to be sort of wandering around far from safe rooms. Absolutely not. Elliot, if you can stay with us for a little more, I just want to go to the other guests. Uh, Jacques, um, uh, Yoav Gallant, the defense minister, just put out a tweet. Uh, the entirety of this was one short sentence simply saying his ball crossed the red line. Uh, what is the message you would advise her to uh, the lady at Sakrab being? So, uh, Defense Minister Galan putting out that just one sentence. What is he? What is his real message here now? Well, you know, as uh, as uh, uh, your interview uh, said uh, earlier, this, it, this might be the appetizer. This is definitely the appetizer because this is not the the the, the response that Israel should respond to what happened uh, to, uh, to Hezbollah crossing the red line on the Golan and killing the, the 12, uh, 12 children playing uh, on the soccer field. Uh, uh, one should uh, stress the fact that this attack was carried out uh, most probably by an attack drone and not by uh, by the Israeli Air Force, which is, uh, again, a, 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 a sort of uh, a, a sort of behavior that might uh, might limit the uh, the reaction of Hezbollah. But definitely hitting the number two man in the military establishment of Hezbollah doesn't, uh, it, it means that Hezbollah has to answer 
Now, how does the, the how, how does this this answer be? It could be, uh, uh, you know, the volleys volleys of uh, 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 of missiles against Israeli towns, uh, maybe hitting uh, uh, as far as Tel Aviv. This could be there uh, one possibility, and uh, and the other thing that would be the uh, try to uh, to change the equation of uh, rule the, the rules of engagement between us and Hezbollah. Till now, the Hezbollah has, has conducted a war of attrition against Israel. But Hassan Nasrallah, in his last speech, just alluded the fact that, to the fact that he might, the Hezbollah might initiate attacks on Israeli soil by Radwan units. So we have to be prepared that this might be a possibility that Hezbollah might, uh, might uh, uh, initiate. And if this is so, we are in the beginning. We, we are the beginning of a, a process that we don't know. Where, but let's uh, call it what it could be, which is the Third Lebanon War. This exactly, could end up being exactly, the Third Lebanon exactly. War. Exactly. So we could be there uh, if Hezbollah answers according to the uh, the principle that he has always uh, the, conducted against Israel. All right. I just, uh, by the way, the name of the uh, we mentioned before a civilian had been killed at in Kibbutz Agoshrim uh, in what's called the yeah. Finger of the Galilee. His name has been uh, released. Uh, I. It's, I think, near Popco, if I'm reading yeah, it correctly. Yeah, 28 years old. Uh, 28 years old, uh, civilian, uh, killed today uh, by a Hezbollah rocket. May his memory be a blessing. Elliot, uh, if you were, are still with us, uh, Elliot Chodoff, are you still with us? No? Okay. We are seeing some, uh, uh, Ariel, we're seeing some photos here. Ariel? Mm hmm Photos here. Yeah, I that's believe, for uh, that's uh, Haj Muhsen for Shukar. This was the target, as far as we know, of the IDF strike. And Lebanese and Lebanese media is saying that he was indeed eliminated in the strike. No official confirmation from either Hezbollah or Israel, but it's uh, indeed a significant first indication. And yes, again, uh, f wanted not only in Israel but also uh, by the U.S. Haj Muhsen really. Um, believed to be one of the key uh, facilitators, not only of managing uh, Hezbollah's war machine in southern Lebanon, but also in connection with his uh, with Iranian officials, IRGC. Obviously, uh, we, we should expect to, uh, to see in the coming hours as uh, customary a picture of Khaj Muhsen with uh, Qasem Soleimani, the former head of the. Uh, RGC's Quds Force, because every senior commander that Israel eliminates We showed him emerges. the road to Jerusalem. The road to Jerusalem. Yeah, it will be interesting to see if he's touted uh, in Hezbollah's, uh, uh, in their announcements of fallen yeah. in the obituaries. As a commander, right. only three have been named that level so far, or a regular fighter. I imagine he will be the fourth commander to be announced killed by uh, Hezbollah. Indeed, if he was uh, eliminated, this would be a severe right. blow to uh, the terror group. Let me, let me go back to Elliot Khodov. Uh, you're still with us, Elliot. Uh, you, yes. and, you and Jacques Neria seem to be in agreement that this could be just the opening shot for the IDF. Uh, but, so what could we expect next? What would be the next logical stage for the IDF to take uh, following uh, this uh, targeted killing uh, in Beirut? The next logical step, first of all, would be more extensive strikes, both air, artillery, um, as, as Jacques said, this was most likely a drone, although it could very well have been a, a, a manned aircraft with, with standoff weapons. Right. I, I do want to interject. There are some reports, and I'm not sure of the attribution, that do say that these were Israeli warplanes that carried out. Right. But I don't have an official idea of confirmation on that. This may be based on reports uh, coming out of uh, from Beirut itself. Right. Well, first of all, there could have been warplanes and, and a drone actually making the strike. In other words, there, there, there are many permutations of how this could have gone. Um, I also saw an unconfirmed report that, that there was a strike at, at Beirut Airport, but unconfirmed. I'm just I'm throwing out there right, right. now. Uh, you know, real time information is is going to be very sketchy under the best of circumstances. But if if this is just the opening move, uh, I think we're going going to see much more extensive strikes at Hezbollah targets all through Lebanon. Uh, as th this was kind of the the opening of, and I think. Uh, Defense Minister Gallant's tweet, they crossed all the red lines, period, is the, just the kind of hint to say uh, we've only just begun. And beyond that, as I said before, it, it's, it's hard to judge. If they make the move that, that Nasrallah threatened, that, that, that Jacques mentioned earlier, 
and there's an actual ground attack by forces of Red One, successful or not. Uh, in other words, God forbid, not a you know not an, an October seventh repeat. But even if they launch an attack that's stopped, then I think we're likely to start to start to see Israeli ground movement into Lebanon. Uh, whether it, that will be limited or full scale, uh, here I'll, I'll say I'm, I'm familiar with a lot of the plans, but the orders have to come down and say, you know, this is what you're actually doing. Right. Uh, gentlemen, I'm just looking at a, a wanted poster that was released by the U.S. for a Fuad uh, uh, Shukor. Uh, in which uh, the U.S. is offering a $5 million dollars for information for him. But I think this is important to point out that post, this poster says that he did play a key role in the 1983 bombing of the U.S. Marine Corps barracks in Beirut, uh, which killed 241 U.S. service personnel. And I would imagine... In any conversation, Prime Minister Netanyahu, they just released a photo of him uh, talking into a, looks like some kind of red phone, and that he has with Washington, uh, he would say, listen, this is the man who killed, was responsible in part for the death of over two, uh, 241 uh, U.S. Uh, service people. Yeah. Uh, and Hezbollah, by the way, said the assassination attempt failed. That they did not manage to uh, eliminate a senior commander. That's what Hezbollah is saying right now, not an official statement. But this is uh, okay. what they're saying right now. All right. We don't know. Uh, we don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But my happens. point being that this target perhaps, in a sense, was picked. And you're right. The U.S. has been pressuring Israel not to escalate. This could be one of the talking points for, for example, yeah, Prime Minister know, Netanyahu. The, the, this guy was the second in command of uh, Ahmad Mouni. So he was, I mean, the, uh, he was up to his throat, uh, uh, immersed in the, this uh, uh, terrorist activities against the French, against the, uh, the international force at the time in 1982, and against the, uh, against the Israeli the, uh, Israeli headquarters in, in, uh, in Tyre twice. I mean, in, in November 83 and November 82, the, the, these are the, the two famous attacks that brought us, I mean, the, uh, more than 70 people killed in a building in the headquarters that were at the time in, in South Lebanon. So, I mean, the, uh, it took some time in order to uh, to eliminate this guy. But if, if he's el eliminated anyway, the right. uh, the ball is in their, the, okay. in their camp, not All right. in the Israel. Jacques Nerrier, uh, Ariel Osran, stay with us. Elliot Chodov, thank you for joining us. Uh, we are going out for a brief break, but stay with us on this breaking news edition. Our beloved virgin was 95% heaven before that fateful day. Then, in one piercing moment, horror and darkness took over our lives. But Jewish National Fund USA were here with us from day one, helping us to collect our pieces together. We choose life and we will continue always to choose life together. broadcast is brought to you by Israel Bonds, the most direct and impactful way to support Israel. Invest now at israelbonds.com.
This broadcast is brought to you by Israel Bonds, the most direct and impactful way to support Israel. Invest now at israelbonds.com. Necesitamos realmente un cambio porque ya estamos haciendo un para nuestro país. Son 25 años de ese gobierno que ha llevado a nuestro país a la ruina, a la pobreza, porque tantos tanto niños pasando hambre, tantas necesidades. on I-24 in Ozan Khaled bin David, a uh, major airstrike in Beirut or a suburb of Beirut carried out by the IDF this evening. The target was Fuad Shukar, one of the uh, top commanders of Hezbollah. Uh, a figure, uh, one of those figures, or maybe the figure responsible for the rocket attacks uh, hitting south, uh, hitting northern Israel from South Lebanon, including the one that killed 12 children uh, uh, over the weekend in the Druze town in the Golan of Majd al Shams and killed an Israeli civilian uh, today as well. Uh, initially, uh, Lebanese media had reported that Fuad Shukar had been killed in that airstrike in Beirut. Hezbollah, just in the past few minutes, uh, releasing their own statement saying he did survive that strike. But uh, based on what we've seen, it's likely there are certainly injuries and casualties, uh, more than one in that uh, strike. Now, this comes, the backdrop of this comes as several world leaders and officials uh, had been pressuring Israel not to take a move that could possibly escalate uh, the conflict between Israel and Hezbollah and Israel and Lebanon as well. Uh, clearly, Israel, the government of Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, took its own decision this evening. But let's take a listen to some of the comments that were made earlier today by some of these international leaders uh, uh, cautioning Israel and Lebanon and Hezbollah against taking any steps that could escalate a conflict. I believe that uh, you asked whether or not um, a fight was uh, with, uh, between Israel and Lebanon, or is Israel and Lebanon and Hezbollah, is inevitable, um, or imminent, excuse me. Uh, I don't believe that uh, wh while we've seen a lot of uh, activity on, on uh, Israel's northern border, we remain concerned about uh, the potential of this escalating into a full-blown fight. Uh, and uh, I don't believe that a fight is, is inevitable. I think that, uh, you know, we'd like to see uh, things resolved in a diplomatic fashion. Very, very concerned about what is happening in Lebanon because of the risk of a regional escalation, just as it seemed that there might be some glimmer of hope. And this is also an element that must be evaluated every time we seem to be a little closer to the hypothesis of a ceasefire. Something happens. It means that there are several, let's say, regional players who aim for an escalation and who, we say, always aim to force Israel to react. I say this also to invite Israel not to fall into this trap. The situation on the de facto border between Lebanon and Israel is very concerning. We urge all parties to act with caution. The UK condemns the strike in the Golan Heights that has tragically claimed the lives of 12 uh, 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 people. Hezbollah must cease their attacks and their destabilizing activity. Well, I stress those comments were made earlier today prior to this uh, Israeli airstrike uh, in Beirut. And I have to say, a diplomatic uh, solution uh, to these tensions seems uh, pretty far away uh, this evening. Let's go back to our correspondent, Zach Anders, who is in northern Israel. And Zach, uh, give us a sense uh, this tension there must be uh, going to be a very tense, long night for the residents of northern Israel uh, and, I sus and possibly for residents of Israel uh, well south of there as well. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we've been monitoring the border activity. The last attacks that have jumped now up to 11 that Hezbollah has claimed responsibility for 
but the last attacks came in at 620 and 635, and it does appear that those barrages were intercepted. Hezbollah says that they were targeting military sites in those two attacks. It appears that those two attacks came before this alleged strike in Beirut, so we have not seen any recorded activity after this Beirut explosion. It has been, uh, throughout the day, very active. The, uh, of course, as you'd mentioned, uh, this uh, event with another rocket attack killing a 30-year-old man, a civilian, here in the, Go or in the Galilee, rather. Uh, but since then, these attacks have largely been appearing to target military sites. That was the sixth attack of the day that Hezbollah had said they, they carried out, the one that killed that man in his 30s and started a large fire. The attacks after that appear as Hezbollah's own statements to be targeting military sites along the border itself. They say that they've been targeting uh, air defense systems and that they've uh, achieved direct hits. Of course, we don't have any confirmation. Nobody within the IDF is telling us that there has been any damage uh, uh, throughout the, the afternoon since these latest attacks. Um, but again, <laughs> it appears that the last attacks that have been carried out by Hezbollah, or been recorded at least, came before what happened in Beirut. So since this Beirut explosion, we have not seen any recorded activity. That's not to say there hasn't been, uh, but none that has made its way to us just yet. So we're, we're paying very close attention to this, uh, obviously, another very tense night here. Right, but no, again, no specific instructions, a change uh, in instructions from the Home Front Command, except, uh, I believe, just for that one city of Kiryat Shmona, right on the border, uh, not far from where today's attack was on, on, the, uh, on Kibbutz HaGoshrim. But you have to imagine anybody who's living anywhere in the vicinity of the north has got to be uh, staying close to home and close to a safe room or shelter this evening. Absolutely, and watching the sky as well with the number of uh, uh, rockets that have already came across the border today and caused, uh, it, it, you know, we were in Kiryat Shmona for uh, the entire afternoon, and it was uh, constant booms echoing throughout the valley. A lot of that was outgoing artillery from the IDF, and then the interceptions that were taking place during the rocket attacks, very loud there this afternoon before this explosion in Beirut. And you're right, it's just interesting to note that there's no changes to the Home Front Command uh, outside of those living uh, right there on the border, Giri Shmona, but uh, still, you would have to imagine that, uh, well, this could go, obviously, uh, either way. Uh, uh, some of the, on the Israeli side that I've spoken to have uh, a feeling or a sense that Hezbollah knows that they messed up, that they shouldn't have hit uh, Majdal Shams, and that killing those 12 children uh, was a, a grave mistake on their part, uh, and that they will absorb this, uh, this blow and not choose to escalate further. Uh, and then you speak to some others, especially to uh, one of my friends in Beirut. They are very concerned tonight uh, that Hezbollah has got its own or has uh, got itself uh, in, in some sort of headspace right now where they think, you know what? Now's the time, and they're going to start hitting back hard as well. Uh, people that I've spoken to in Beirut uh, that haven't been able to leave, very, very scared. And uh, since this explosion, really, really concerned uh, that whatever comes next, they might not be prepared for it, given the, the shelters and the orders that their own embassies, the American embassy and the uh, British embassy, telling people, get out now if you can. But it looks like that window is already closed. All right, certainly. Uh, I have reason to be concerned, certainly in Beirut and uh, certainly here. Here in Israel as well. Zach Anders, thank you for that. We'll uh, keep you posted. Uh, keep us posted on anything happening in the North, Ariel. Some more reports coming out of Arabic media on what uh, may have occurred there. Right. So according to uh, Saudi Al Arabiya, um, citing sources saying that the attack indeed targeted Fuad Shukir, but that the airstrike was, uh, it failed, that he was not eliminated. Hezbollah has reportedly begun closing off the roads leading to the uh, targeted area and there was a report on sky news of at least two people killed at but, least two people but killed. not what but not for what one of them was a moon they weren't identified they weren't yet. identified um but uh we are already coinciding with these uh reports that indicate that perhaps this was an unsuccessful elimination uh, attempt the Leb lebanon's national news agency they're uh, giving more details confirming that this was indeed uh, drone that launched three missiles mm -hmm. 
at uh, at the target, the target obviously the meeting of the Shura Council, but uh, we may not get official confirmation regarding the the condition of Chaj Muhsen Fuad Shuker for days. I'll remind you, we're still waiting on official confirmation regarding the elimination of Muhammad Def, <laughs> yes. the head of the the commander of uh, of Hamas's military wing in an airstrike in Khan Yunis. That was over two weeks ago, and we still haven't received official confirmation as to that. I think it would be in the interest of Hezbollah to keep a veil of uncertainty, of secrecy regarding this, and that indicates uh, why they decided to block the roads leading to the site. And, uh, of course, pending the result of the strike, if Shuke was not eliminated, obviously that would uh, put Hezbollah in a different situation uh, in terms of responding to Israel. Well, let me, However, the, the, the striking in Beirut, it's not the first time it happened in the war. Israel eliminated Hamas number two, Saleh al in a drone strike in Beirut. In the same place. In the same area. Back then, Hezbollah's response was limited. If this was a successful elimination, I would imagine we will see a severe response. If it was unsuccessful, it won't mean that we'll see the same response that we would have seen if they were successful. Well, let me ask you, Jacques, is that it? Does it make a difference if Fuad Shuka was killed or not Indeed. in terms of the Hezbollah response? Indeed. I mean, and then you, you have the, uh, the Israeli de declaration that we, have, uh, we, ha we are done, meaning that uh, if uh, Hezbollah is uh, accepting the fact, then there is no need for another round between us and Hezbollah concerning the, uh, the, 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 the attempt to kill this, uh, uh, this Shuka. Anyway, I mean, uh, 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 the fact that we have, I mean, Israel has used a drone uh, like it did uh, against Salah Harouri means that uh, the uh, uh, intention was not to hit a heavy populated, densely populated uh, area. And because of that, and because the target was very limited, it's, uh, it is a message to Hezbollah not to, widen, not to widen the scope of the conflict between us and, uh, and Hezbollah. It might respond with salvos of missiles, but I think that the, the earlier assumption or the early the earlier assessment that Hezbollah would hit Tel Aviv or Haifa I think that uh, this is uh, this was the, to, to go too much let me ask you Jacques the Prime Minister's office did release a photo of Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, sitting with some top officials uh, uh, with his cabinet secretary Saki Bravman there you have it you see his military secretary you see uh, Saki Negbi, uh, the head of the Security Council there's an IDF official we have uh, a copy of this photo with the uh, with Obama sitting with the, <laughs> with in a way though that did eliminate its target yeah. uh, obviously some mili a military I would say military intelligence figure perhaps whose face is uh, blacked out here but let's talk about whether you think that Prime Minister Ted Netanyahu maybe did give any kind of warning for example to the United States that it was taking this kind of uh, attempt at a, a targeted assassination at a figure who was wanted by the U.S. who was responsible in part, certainly for that bombing of the uh, uh, in Beirut that killed 241 American servicemen, is that something you think that uh, that the Prime Minister Netanyahu would have discussed beforehand uh, with the Americans, at least? Discussed? No. Uh, the announced? Yes. When? A few minutes before the attack. This is uh, the, the way it, uh, it worked. It, because otherwise, the Americans would have tried to stop him. Uh, and uh, they don't want Israel to be involved in an attack in Beirut. So the, uh, the, the, the fact that we did that, it was beyond, and uh, beyond the, um, the American position, and, uh, and in a way to express to the American that we have our own decision-making process and we are independent in our, uh, in our decisions. And uh, this is why, I mean, the, it, it was, I mean, the, the same strategy was adopted at the time with, with Salah Harouri. It's the same uh, drone attack. It's the same weapons that have been used. It's the same area that has been targeted. And there's nothing newer. Now, of course, the, the, uh, the fact that uh, the Prime Minister has published these uh, this photos, uh, it was under the, the impression that the attack was uh, a success. But now, since it, it appears that uh, he might be still living or the, uh, or the attacker would have been a failure, then I think that this, uh, th this photo op should be put aside. All right. Uh, uh, and the question, Ariel, is, of course, Hezbollah is, as we've stressed so many times, 
uh, at the station, an Iranian proxy uh, funded by Iran, sponsored on by Iran. Uh, this is an, comes on an interesting day uh, in terms of Iran itself, yep. and one has to wonder, uh, Iran has other ways of striking at Israel, even not directly through Hezbollah, through its other proxies. And we've seen those proxies work in coordination, uh, certainly since October 7th. And at least four of them met with uh, Iran's new president, Masoud Pazishkian, and Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei today during his inauguration. Look, at first when we heard of the strike and we heard of a senior command, senior official in Hezbollah that was targeted, we were like, okay, maybe was this uh, Naim Qasem, the number two of Hezbollah? But no, he's in Tehran, exactly for what you're describing. Uh, um, Hezbollah is one of Iran's proxies, but perhaps its most powerful one. Some could say that it's even the most powerful non, uh, not official military in, if not the Middle East, in the world. And um, th that's why targeting such an official like Fuad Shukil would be uh, so, so important. But uh, at the end of the day, we're seeing Hezbollah, yes, it is one of Iran's proxies, but it also, it is, has many, most of its interests, you could say, are Lebanese-based. It's really torn between that Iranian influence and the Lebanese base. Many in Lebanon are accusing Hezbollah of being an, uh, an alien element, a uh, Shia Iranian element in Lebanon that doesn't belong there. You can see it just by the clerics that they don't dress as uh, usual standard Lebanese uh, Muslim clerics. They uh, adopt the more uh, Iranian kind of uh, sh uh, Iraqi model of clothing, but that's just one example. But if we're looking today on a day like this, with you have the proxies meeting in Tehran, and you have a suspected Israeli airstrike in Beirut. Well, it's not suspected. The IDF has claimed credit for it. Yeah, now, so it's, <laughs> I, I, I meant elimination. You're right. The IDF did uh, did confirm this would be uh, just simply face value would be crossing a red line that Nasrallah. Put. However, Israel, as I mentioned, already did cross that red line by eliminating Saleh al again, in the same area in Beirut. So we have to t take what, what warnings Israel <clears throat> receives from Hezbollah uh, at face value. But if we're looking at the overarching theme of Iran, where they play into this, Pazishkian in his meeting with uh, Naim Qasim, as well as the other uh, senior officials, the leaders of Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, as well as the Houthi spokesperson, said that supporting the resistance front is religious law for the Islamic Republic of, of Iran. And I think that answers all the questions regarding their dedication. You know, Israel has been trying since the beginning to change the rules of engagement. And the fact that, I mean, you just mentioned that the uh, defense minister just published uh, the, this. Which is why I want to ask you, Jack, could you really think uh, Israel can go back and even Hezbollah can go back to the old rules of engagement in, stri in which uh, basically airstrikes are limited to northern Israel up to a certain point in northern Israel and up to I, a certain I, I point in you, South I, Lebanon? I will tell you as an Israeli, if this is what Israel has to prove in Beirut, then we, are, uh, the, we, we have a real problem. We have a real problem, and this prime minister would have a real problem with this public, Israeli public, because the Israeli public expects much more than that. Uh, as, I, as your interviewer earlier said, it's an appetizer. For us, it's an appetizer. And if this appetizer doesn't come with a, with a, with a real meal, then I think that uh, the, uh, the onus would be on this government, and this government would, ha would even show its face to the, to the public, because this would be a real disaster. Because and and of course, the failing to kill this uh, the, this terrorist would mean for Hezbollah that okay that we they have prevailed and now this is the, the they, they will they will strike and will say this is in, in response to what Israel did they have all the legitimacy to do so and this is where we are right now and this try. is always too early to uh, to chant victory always right. too early just wait and right. see.
Never say mission accomplished uh, yeah, before we'll, we'll it is. See first. But let's talk, Ari, a little more in detail about Fort Shooker and where he was. Uh, I believe we do even have a graphic on that uh, in the sort of hierarchy of uh, Hezbollah. Uh, li alive or dead, as you, you might right, say. Right, so this is a, a graphic, excellent graphic, in my opinion, thanks to the Alma Research and Education Center. Basically, Following the elimination of uh, Imad Mounia, the military commander right. of Hezbollah in 2008, Nasrallah didn't really uh, appoint a successor to Mounia. And he uh, kept this divide-and-conquer kind of uh, MO by distributing um, Mounia's responsibilities among a wide range of people. So one second to the right is Fuad Shukar. Um, we have uh, the main commander of Hezbollah forces in the south, uh, Khajabul Fadel or uh, Ali Karki. He's third to the left. There's no uh, updated picture of, of his, but it, during this war, Israel had reportedly attempted to eliminate Karki, failed in, a, in an airstrike. If we're looking at perhaps the closest thing to a successor to Imad Mounia, I would point out two people on this graphic who are not Fuad Shukar. I'm talking about Ibrahim Akili, he's third to the right. He is uh, considered the de facto military commander and uh, head of, uh, former head of uh, Hezbollah's operations unit, and Talal Khamiya. He's uh, all the way on the left, head of the unit 910 that's operating uh, attacks, uh, Palestinian attacks outside of Lebanese territory on Israel. Throughout the years, uh, Hamia, Akil, and Fuad Shuker, those really have been the top three, uh, uh, you could say, command commanders, um, not field commanders, but really in the uh, in between of uh, Nasrallah, the political leadership, and Ali Karki, the military leadership in the south. So you had uh, these three, among others, main characters. So Fuad Shuker indeed was one of them a key element in, uh, in, in Hezbollah's ability to manage its, uh, it, it, for lack of a better term, millet standing army, um, because that's pretty much what Hezbollah has uh, in southern Lebanon. And uh, I think if we're looking at statements this evening, UNIFIL, the UN peacekeeping mm. force, saying that they're in contact with both sides, uh, calling for uh, de-escalation. I think th the UN should uh, look itself in the mirror uh, and answer why for the past 18 years they have not uh, demanded the implementation of uh, UN Resolution 1701 following the previous war between Israel and Hezbollah. That resolution, we keep on returning to this, uh, forbids the presence of any Hezbollah military personnel or weapons south of the Litani River. Now, when everyone's saying we need a diplomatic solution for this, UN resolutions are the diplomatic solution. But if they're not right. up, up, upheld and if and, the and if they don't mean anything, it's a, it's then a meaningless piece of exactly. Paper. And that that is what has, in my opinion, the residents of the north of northern Israel most concerned. Because once the war in Gaza is done. Just like Nasrallah said, Hezbollah will stop firing, and as far as they're concerned, they're okay with it. The, the question is, can Israel, in a post-October 7th reality, bring back its citizens to a place where you have a deadly uh, genocidal terror organization on the other side of the fence, just waiting for the right opportunity? That is the question that Israel needs to ask itself, and that is the answer it needs to give when people uh, present the diplomatic solution as the only holy solution for this unholy conflict. Right. Now, I'm just going to note on Mayadeen, which is a station uh, linked with Hezbollah, they are saying, reporting 10 injured uh, in this evening's uh, IDF airstrike. Al Jazeera so, reporting six killed. And six and six killed. So uh, Reuters is being uh, cautious and saying uh, that the fate of... of, of uh, unknown. Uh, is, is, of Shuka is, is unknown. But clearly, we do have uh, uh, injured and likely fatalities, Jacques. So it's at yeah. this stage, you even know, if, if Shukar is not you know, killed... You know, kind of two days ago, Israel declared that we know who is responsible of uh, targeting the Majd al-Shams soccer, uh, uh, soccer ball uh, area. And it was a guy called Ali Muhammad Yahya. 
And now it comes uh, the, uh, another name, the Muhammad uh, Fuad Shukr. Who but he's is, responsible. Who is the responsible? Now he's, he's respons responsible yeah. of the responsible. Okay. Uh, we are getting some uh, reports uh, now uh, citing uh, Lebanese military sources, not Hezbollah, but Lebanese military sources, reporting Arab media saying that uh, Shukr was, was not killed. Uh, in this strike. Uh, if that is the case, Jacques, um, uh, how does that stand for Israel and the IDF and the government if it took the strike in Beirut? Might have killed some significant figures, let's be clear, but if the main target was not uh, taken if out If the main the strike, target uh, has not been uh, hit and, uh, and the attack finally is a failure, then I think that Israel must rethink its policy and its, uh, its tactics concerning uh, Hezbollah and try to uh, try to divert to uh, another option. Because, I mean, this is not the end of it. This cannot be the end of it because this is not the end of the conflict. It will not end uh, Hezbollah firing uh, on Israeli localities. It, it, it will not force Hezbollah to withdraw to the Litani. It will not force uh, Israel to accept uh, the actual uh, boundary between Lebanon uh, and Israel. We are at the same square number one. That's it from the very beginning. Right. Unfortunately, that would be unfortunate. Gentlemen, we are going out on this broadcast. Just to recap, uh, IDF did confirm it carried out an airstrike in a Beirut suburb. Uh, the target was Fuad Shukr, a uh, top Hezbollah commander, one of the several number twos, apparently, to Hassan Nasrallah, a figure responsible uh, uh, for the rocket fire in northern Israel, such as that that killed the uh, 12 children in Majd el Shams and one Israeli civilian today, also involved in the bombing uh, in Beirut that killed 241 Americans. On foot. There are conflicting reports of whether... Yes. Uh, yes, yeah, so there are increasing reports that this was an unsuccessful attempt. Uh, this is uh, mainly Saudi channels, al Hadaf and al Arabiya, saying that he was not eliminated and that Fort Shukar managed to leave the building just before it was targeted. Right, the final word to our viewers here in Israel. In the north, certainly, you should be staying close to home and close to a safe room and shelter. And that might be good advice, even for people here in the center of Israel as well. Thank you for joining us on I-24 News.